and I, I did just start the recording, so um, we will, from here on out, you'll be able to view this whole video. And it looks like we still have people coming in, so we will give it one or two more minutes and then we will introduce the Young Money Managers. So for those of you guys that are just hopping in on hopping in here, um, we ask that you guys turn on your videos if you are able so that we can see your faces and um, help you learn more about this topic. And also if you notice in the um, top left-hand corner, we are recording this session so that, so you guys can have access to this after um, this workshop is over. I just wanted to make you guys aware of that. Thank you guys for those that have their camera on. It's so good to see you guys. So let's start by introducing the five young money managers that we have. So I'll start. I am, I'm not a young money manager, but I am the job coach for the young money managers. Um, and you, you see, it says my name is Camille Hogan, but that is not my name. I'm just on her account for this Zoom session. My name is actually Amanda Kissel. So some of you may be familiar with me. Some of you may not. Um, I've been a job coach since 2017 and I've loved every minute of it. And so I've actually, I actually see some familiar, some familiar, familiar names and faces on here. So I love, I love seeing you guys. So um, I guess I'll share one fun fact about myself. I have a daughter that is a year and a half now, and she is my life. She's my everything. So um, yeah, now we will start by introducing the um, young money managers that are not presenting so that if, um, and Kosi, if you want to start, we'd love to hear from you. Hi, guys. Uh, I'm in Kosi. I'm a young money manager. Uh, I'm 19. And a, a fun fact about me is that I, I like to, uh, I like stocks and investing in the stock market. So, oh, and um, I have a presentation myself uh, this July as well on credit building on the 28th. Thank you, and Cozy. Um, Dania, would you like to go next to introduce yourself? Sure. Um, so hi, everybody. As she just said, my name is Dania. Um, I am a young money manager, and I also will be doing a presentation on the 21st about car buying, so stay tuned for that. Um, fun fact about me is I'm a senior um, in high school, and I love to skate. Love it. So. Yeah, hopefully see you guys next Wednesday. Awesome. And then Charity, would you like to introduce yourself? Um, Charity, I think you're muted. There you go. Hi. My name is Charity. I am 22. Um, this is my first time at Young Money Managers. I will be doing a car buying video next week with Dania. And my fun fact is I'm a mom of two. I have two boys. And that's about it. There we go. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Um, yeah, so be sure to um, stay tuned for those the information on our next PDs. I'll, I'll give you guys that at the end. Um, but next, we would like, I would like to introduce to you guys the two presenters for tonight's workshop on setting SMART goals and budgeting. Our first presenter is Jeremiah Willis. 
Um, so I'm Jeremiah. Uh, again, I'm the presenter. Um, I'm Claude Lafayette. Um, I'm a part of the Young Money Managers. I am a, a returning alumni to the SDLU jobs. And hopefully you guys enjoy the workshop and everything we put into it. Hello, my name is Alexis Harris. Um, I'm 24 years old. I attend, uh, I just recently graduated from the University of Central Missouri, uh, down there in Warrensburg. Um, any of you, I, I am alumni of SEO Youth Program too, also. Um, if any of you guys out there on the uh, Zoom call that are seniors or are about to be seniors, um, look into UCM, also as University of Central Missouri again. Let me know in the group chat, in the chat box, or any of you guys apply to UCM or trying to go to UCL. All right, so now that the introductions are over and through, uh, we're gonna share our screen and get straight into it. Just to make sure everybody can hear me, right? Take that. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, so everybody can see our screen, right? Be good. All right. So getting into it, we're going to do a, a, a icebreaker. Um, so is any, anybody on this call from SLIP? Uh, if you're from SLIP, Slate, uh, Urban League, Mission, uh, SDL, or Merce Goodwill. Uh, it'd probably be better if we do one of each. Do it, your name, your age, the organization, and then uh, what's your goal for as budgeting or uh, financing? Uh, so far. This is my top top. Um, um, I'm Demi. Hold on one sec. Could you repeat it one more time? Um, so it's your name, your age, the organization that you're with, and then a general goal. Um, so as y'all already know, I'm with Young Money Managers. That's with SEO Shops. Um, one of my main goals is to obtain, um, you know, being really active in my financial life, kind of keep organized. Did it, did it go out? That was it. So you said to keep yourself organized, right? All right, so she was from Merz Goodwill and it's to keep herself organized. So anybody else from Slip, Slate, Urban League or Mission SDL want to uh, introduce themselves before we finish? Um, so to quicken this pace, I'm definitely going to have to start calling on people. So don't want to have to do that. So if somebody want to say something, that'll probably be a lot better. Oh, okay. going to read it out. So there is somebody in the chat said that their name is Maka, and I apologize if I'm saying that wrong. Um, one of her goals is to save for a car. So what, um, where are you from? Are you from Urban League, Mission, Slip, or Slate? Should 
She's from Slip. Okay. So we've got someone from Slip and Mers Goodwill. Slate, anyone from Slate? No one? Uh, hello? Yes. Oh, hello. Hi. Um, yes, my name is Maka. Mm -hmm. I am from Slip, and that is one of my goals to save for a car and also find a career related to my field, a job related to my field interest. Awesome. Awesome. I'm going to write that down because we are going to use these goals in a little bit, and we're going to build on them and make them SMART goals. So um, I'm writing it down so we don't forget that one. And she was from Slip. Perfect. Anybody else? Oh, we have another one. Kalia, you're from um, Urban League. Perfect. You're 15. And one of your goals is to be a neurosurgeon. That's, that's amazing. Wow. Um, do you have a financial related goal that you want to share? Saving money? Any? You want to get a credit card? You, do you want um, save for college? What? Any any kind of financial related goals? Okay, save money to travel. Awesome. So we've got Slip, Urban League, MERS Goodwill. What about Slate and Mission St. Louis? Anybody from one of those? Okay, well, we will, we've got three participants for this, um, for our icebreaker, so that's good enough. We will move on to um, the actual presentation. All right, so now we're getting into it. So the goals that we were, I know I'm sharing that. So everybody can see the screen right now, right? Right. All right. So these are our objectives. We're trying to get our SMART goal definition, the SMART goal examples, budgeting definition, a budget plan, planning importance, and then a budgeting process, the priority slash organization and then smart goals and budget resources. We did the icebreaker. So what does, does anybody on here or can anybody tell me what the smart goals mean? Or the acronym for smart? Smart goals, S is for specific, M is for measurement, A is for accurate, R is for realistic, and T is for time. I was like, if, if we're not really comfortable right now, if you guys want to, you can uh, type in a chat. It's somebody just, available. somebody uh, just replied. Comfortable and up and moving. So this won't be as boring as. Or as quiet. As somebody that. already said something. Uh, yeah. Somebody already said something about. All right. So. I'll be the one to let you guys know what SMART goals is. Um, so SMART, SMART stands for specific, measurable, attainable slash achievable, relevant, and timely. So that is um, the acronym for SMART. Um, to break it down into the goals that you guys gave me, um, what were the, um, the three. saving to travel, right? With one of the goals. Yeah. Um, so to break that down into a smart goal, you got it, uh, saving money to travel. Um, yeah. So, yeah, break it down to. So Pacific, um, just really, um, writing down, defining what you say. You say you want to save and travel. Measurable, um, how long will it take you to save, to travel to that certain 
specific place, achievement, uh, yeah, achievable, achievement, achievable, attainable. Um, did you accomplish that goal um, by really saving how much you need to save for that 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 trip? And uh, did you meet did you meet your certain needs or your needs or your goal for that um, trip or wherever you want to travel to as far as that? And did you save in a timely like manner? Like did, did was did your goal reach your time to save to travel? And our next one, what was it? Uh, what was your goal? Um, so the other goal was uh, to organize. So to break it down like that, you want to make sure. So be specific. What do you want to be organized about? Um, so whether that's you want to be organized in school, whether you want to be organized in a job or your money, make sure you break it down to the nitty gritty. Uh, make sure that it's specific um, so you can get into it and then make sure it's measurable. Uh, make sure you're actually able to um, organize that specific thing and then make sure you're able to, again, uh, achieve those in the time that you have it um, and then make sure it's relevant in your life. You don't want to organize nothing that's irrelevant or has no meaning or is pointless to organize and then make sure it's in a timely manner. So, again, use those SMART goals, that SMART acronym for your life and for your job and your money and life will, I promise you, will definitely go a lot better. So it says that one point you guys said that you don't think that you can hear, that we don't, you don't think that we can hear you guys. Um, so I apologize for that. Can you guys hear us okay again? I just want to make sure. Yeah, uh, they can hear you. I, I think that you all can't hear them. Can you guys hear them? Because mm -hmm. when, when, when you all were doing the SMART goals, um, it, somebody broke down the, the acronym and uh, I don't think you all uh, heard. Do me a favor, say that one more time. So when somebody was doing the, when you all were doing the SMART goals slide, somebody broke down the acronym and uh, I don't think you all heard them. So see, I heard it. Okay. Um, so is it because we're sharing that they can't hear code, we can't hear them? We sure the last how we are then. All right, so does somebody want to repeat that then? Sorry about that. How they wanted to uh, break down smart goals. Um, it was me. I was just saying. Um what each letter was. Uh, Can you hear me? Do it again or? Um, that's fine, I could do it again. I was saying S is for specific. Um, M was for measurable. Um, so you that... wanna be. Let me see. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I can hear you. Can hear you.
Um, so again, sorry about the the whole not being able to hear. Uh, definitely don't know what's going on with that one, but hopefully we definitely getting better and doing better uh, throughout it. So with the budgeting, um, hopefully uh, we hear you guys this time. Uh, does somebody want to tell us what budgeting is or if they have a budget? Um, and if you could either type it in the chat or uh, unmute yourself and say it a little louder for us. I can go. Okay. All right. So I define budgeting myself as saving money, um, essentially for a specific thing. So you would be, so it's like saving money towards a specific, um, towards a specific goal. Okay, so that was perfect. So do you yourself actually have a budget or could you break that uh, down for us for how you use it in your life specifically or? Yeah, give us a, like an example as far as your budget. Um, well, a budget, well, let's see. I would put money towards, I would set out a, a set amount for what I'm gonna be spending uh, at lunch or what specific uh, payments could be coming up, like a, my credit card uh, bill might be due. Um, put it just essentially putting money towards things that come annually or something that you might be looking forward to, like somebody said uh, previously, um, they're saving money to travel or something like that. Like that would be another thing you could you could budget towards. But you know, budgeting with with lunch, with buying groceries, paying bills, allocating certain amounts of money towards a specific thing. Okay, perfect. Um, so somebody in the chat said something. Um, Okay, so everything you guys are saying is, huh? You wanna come and read it because they can't see it. And then um, Chastity in the chat, she shared that a budget is um, a, basically creating a financial goal that will help you with spending and saving money, which definitely, I like that definition. Yeah, I like that too. So again, uh, so we definitely got some uh, perfect answers um, and perfect examples on how you are using budget as well as what the definition is. So the process of creating a plan to spend your money, simply balancing your expenses with your income. Um, so the purpose of a budget is to plan, organize, track, and improve your financial situation. So you want to be able to put everything, break it down like to the T, like you want to be able to make you a list, put your money together, see where it's at and go with it. The last thing you want to do is stretch your money too thin and now you sitting looking poor and pitiful, right? So the last thing you want to do is stretch your money too thin. So have that budget and put everything into it, whether it's self-care needs, um, just some spend around money, um, whatever, whether you got bills, put that all into the budget, make sure that your income is tracking all of that. So it's from controlling your spending to consistently saving, and investing a portion of your income, a budget helps you stay on course in pursuit of your long-term financial goals. So again, if with with the definition it's saying uh saving or investing you want to put that in there as well not just uh putting your money towards bills or self-care needs you want to take away a percentage of your money and either invest it to double it 
or to save it as well, to uh, double it as well as for uh, future things. Um, Cause every short term goal always leads to a long term goal that is supposed to benefit all of us in the end. So how do you, how do setting goals and budgeting uh, relate? So can somebody tell me uh, without reading the thing, how does, <laughs> how does uh, setting goals and budgeting relate to each other? With your own definition. I think when you budget, you are setting a goal um, on how you want to spend and save. So every time you say, oh, I want to spend it on this or I want to save this amount, that's setting a goal for yourself. Okay, okay. See, that's perfect. I like that. See, there we go. We starting to get that interaction. So that's, that was perfect. Um, so anybody else want to say anything before we give this long-term version of what of how it relates? Um, and I will also say um, when you budget, it kind of helps you get in the mindset of disciplining yourself in order to, you know, maintaining those goals and establishing them and so it's all about the discipline that you gain from doing both so yeah okay perfect so that's that's y'all should be teaching this uh at this <laughs> point um that's perfect so again uh these relate because everyone has a reason for budgeting whether it's small to you big to you and at, at the end of the day, it's your goal and it's your budget and it's your reason and it's your purpose for it. So take everything to the extreme. Uh, that's your own personal thing. So put 100% in it uh, as well as you would in anything else. Um, so take out that time, put that budget and, and go from there. It all relates because you have a reason for it. All right. So who all actually has like a budgeting like PDF or like uh, actual planning. And how and, does that work for you? And like, I know everybody uh budgeting plan might be different. So we gave y'all a little example of a budgeting, like a weekly budgeting, but um, everybody budgeting like plan or schedule will be different. Some people might not have rental utilities. Some people might have insurance. Some people might have savings, just a phone bill. So yeah. What is your plan? How your budget plan looks? Um, so I would say that I haven't rolled one down. I've tried before. Um, like I said earlier, it's having that discipline and consistency. But I will say you need planning and budgeting, gas and trainer and all the different stuff. You will need to write that down. So if you don't have one, it's fine. They're going to teach you through it today. But I advise you all to please get one. Perfect. So do you plan on actually getting you one together now that we're uh, actually speaking on it? Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. So with, with budgeting, although this says weekly, you can do a, a daily budget, a weekly budget, monthly budget, yearly budget. It's specifically towards you and what your budget and your income is based off of. Uh, it's gonna be different from everybody else's. So the whole point is for you to take time out your day, your week, and sit down and plan that out and make that as personal as possible. Um, putting everything and anything that you spend your money on into it and making sure that you still have money in the end to whether save or invest or just to have for emergency funds. So it doesn't necessarily uh, have to be weekly. It's whatever works for you. And however, whether it's you're doing hourly base pay or a salary, make sure that you uh, have it set down for a personal budget. So this, this is the, the PowerPoint. So it is a chart that shows the flow of money in everyday life. And it is, what is your plan? So again, making it personal, organize a breakdown, again, checking out that time. And is it smart? Go through that again and make sure that it's specific 
and that is timely, relevant, attainable, and achievable, and it's measurable. Make sure it's, it fits into that so you have no loopholes in your budget. And then you just put it together. As easy as that sounds saying it, it's definitely going to take some time to put it together. And it's going to be stressful. You're going to be pulling hair out left and right. But <laughs> once you do it over a course of time, it'll be a lot easier. So um, before you start, uh, make time to create your budget. As far as like uh, Jeremiah said, sit down, take time. Um, don't do it. Literally, don't do it at home. Like go to a park, go to get, get lunch by yourself and sit down and take time with your budget. Like you said, um, every week might be different. Your income might be different every two weeks. You know, some people get paid bi-weekly. Some people get paid um, every week, it just depends on your job. Uh, figure out if you want to create a um, weekly, monthly, or yearly budget. Meaning, um, as far as, do you want to um, sit there? Do you want to save your money as far as weekly, monthly, or yearly? Do you want to just save for a year? Do you want to save just monthly, like for that month of June or July, or weekly, like every two weeks, and save? Um, understand that each week, month, and year is going to be different. Again, um, we all don't know how uh, the money is coming in. Um, things change. Life happens. Um, so you want to make sure that you do it consistently. Consistency is key. Um, and that's just how we go out through life. Um, things change. Again, money isn't always something that is um, consistent. So you have to make sure um, whether you got to pick up a new shift or um, bring in some uh, different ideas to make sure that your budget doesn't really change. Do what you got to do. Set up something, again, that's personal for you and you only. Um, your budget shouldn't work for nobody else simply because it's not their budget. And then get organized. Again, uh, go to the park. Get some things that's going to get your mind flowing. Just in case you forget something that you spend your money on, go out. And I prefer not doing it in your house because I'm going to go to sleep. That's just me. Uh, sitting in the house trying to write a budget, yo, that's going to be boring. But I promise you, it's going to work for the best. So go out, go outside your comfort zone and get those creative juices flowing, stretch, and Go and get organized. Go and put in 100% in your life and your budget. And then go make that list. Actually have you a list, whether that's digitally, on paper, or you just, I wouldn't have it mentally, though. Like, don't. I promise you, the way time goes, you're going to forget. I promise you. So just write it down. Either have it digitally or on paper and keep track of it. Make sure you hitting those steps and those needs. Make sure that those bills is getting paid. The last thing you want to do is to look up and that phone not on. Like, yo, <laughs> that's the last thing you want to do because that money is not going to where it's supposed to. Same with the house bills. Last thing you want to do is put in a key to your house and you walk in and the light's not on. Like, that's the last thing you want to do is walk in into a dark house. So make sure that though that money is going to what it's supposed to, when it's supposed to, and make sure it's on time so that you can still see how much you got left of that money. And then auto draft your savings. Again, if it's digitally, make sure that everything is coming straight out of your bank account into those bills. Make sure that everything is getting paid. Set your priorities. Make sure everything is, is prioritized from important to least important. Um, as I would say, your your phone bills and your house bills are the most important. Um, getting your brand new shoes is not. Um, so make sure you put that two to three hundred dollars to that bill first before you go buy them brand new Jordans. Because the last thing you're gonna need is stuck with them Jordans and no house. So uh, hey, again, prioritize and then track it. Once you once stuff start coming out. Make sure you planned it perfectly and that you still got that money left. And uh, keep bills in one place. Meaning, like my grandma, she literally keep her bills in like a bag, which I be looking at her like, <laughs> grandma, okay, you got it. I mean, that's the old school way, so I can't tell how she do it. 
But um, keep your bills in one place as far as writing on there, like, oh, paid on this date, um, this how much I paid for. Keep your bills in one place as far as um, put it in a drawer or a little Ziploc like bag if you have to, or a binder at, at home or from the store, go to the store, get a binder, put your bills in one place and just stuff them in there and make sure you have the date that you paid it. So if the bill collector call you and be like, oh, you haven't paid your bills or this bill haven't been paid. And then you come home, like Jeremiah said, your lights off, but you'd be like, oh, I paid it in my bank account. Say this. Well, yeah, keep your bills in one place. Um, And make sure there is less stress because of it, meaning just make sure you, you think about this before you start list, I promise you it will work out for you. It will be less stress for you. Some of you guys probably younger and you're probably not thinking about it, but as you get older, you must definitely <laughs> gonna think about it. <laughs> All right, so this is ways to manage your spending. And this is, this is like we literally sat down making this slide to make it personal. Um, whether you want to set up a bank account, uh, take a look at your income and set your money goals. Um, whether you have a bank account or not, um, whether you're cash based, check based, however you go about getting your bag, um, take a look at it. Sit down, sit down and, and make those goals. Um, if you don't have a bank account, I would definitely look into one. Do your research, 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 research. That's something that's going to come out of my mouth a whole bunch of times throughout this um throughout this zoom call you got to do your research look and see what what fits best for you and you only um again it's not gonna work for nobody else so do that research make sure that that this um uh, that this account this seven account works for you and works for your income and that you're able to uh, save as much as possible um for that generational wealth so this is um, some of our spending habits um, or some of our methods of spending. Uh, before I get into it, who has uh, spending methods and what are they? Like, put me on game. Like, let me know. How y'all save y'all money <laughs> the whole time? Well, me, for myself, I will, if I go somewhere, I won't bring my wallet. You know what I'm saying? Not like if I go out to eat with friends or something like that. But if I go somewhere um, and I'm like, I'm not planning on spending any money, I don't bring my wallet. Um, and that's a way I avoid spending money. And uh, also putting my money into something else. Like, as I said previously, I do stocks. So putting my money into the stock market is another way I sort of put that away and keep it. And that's perfect. Uh, not coming out the house with a, with a wallet is perfect. I know we all go to the grocery store and we supposed to be getting three things and we leave with half the store. And again, uh, put breaking down that budget and only bringing the amount of money that you need to the store is going to keep you um, on top of that budget. The last thing you want to do is supposed to be going to the store for a uh, for some cooking oil and then you leave with everything but the cooking oil like <laughs> that's the last thing you want to do and then now you have to make that last minute uh drive and then now that's gas and then more money getting taken out so anybody else uh, want to tell me some spending methods and some habits chastity says that every week you put at least thirty dollars in your savings, or try to spend money on needs and not my wants. For sure, that's so important. Having an idea of your needs versus your wants—that's part of that's part of a budget. Um, making that list of what things you need to spend your money on versus want to spend your money on, and that leftover money can go towards your wants after you take care of your needs. Definitely, that's a great, great way to save. Um, and then there was also another comment in the chat also. She said another chat. Yes, and I see another one. Um, Kavion Robin, I, I'm sorry if I apologize, if I say your name wrong. Um, she said that she cuts her card off and hides it until the remain 
the until my reminder tells me to pay something. Oh, I never heard of that one. That's an interesting way to go about it. Um, are you talking about your debit card? I assume. Anything else in the chat? Does anybody else want to let me know? I definitely just got put on game with that one. Uh, turn like off they the cut credit. Off the card and put <laughs> uh, us that on. definitely came in clutch. It's something I'm definitely writing down to use for the future, um, if not now. Uh, anybody else got anything else before? I've got um, to add something. Um, you said it's a debit card because um, that, that's better because if you shut off your debt, up your credit card that does hurt your credit score so just keep that in mind um if it's a debit card those are it's basically you know cash money coming from your checking account so um that there's no score involved with that so um there is a, a separate pd on credit building that will go more into detail with all that um in a couple weeks so um the way i say is I make sure I have money in my hand of savings. So like um, if I come across the extra $20, five, 10, I don't like breaking down my bills because I tend to spend smaller bills way quicker than big bills. So I put them up. So I put them in my favorite shoe box. Y'all know y'all don't wear your favorite shoes unless y'all got a big men or something. So I do that with my actual cash money that I save. And also since I have more than than one source of income, I actually save from each job. Um, and I kind of feel like, I wouldn't say half, but at least uh, two fifths of it away. And I put it directly in my savings as soon as I get paid. So that way, the money that I'm counting, I'm not counting the money that I need to save. So, yeah. That's actually perfect. Um... If you got those multiple sources of income, you definitely want to at least take a little bit from each, uh, put it together, and now you got something bigger than what you had uh, to save with. So that's actually perfect. Um, I know we all not out here just one job, and we out here bag in the bag. You feel me? Um, you say you got another one? Yes. Yeah. There's another. Um, Trinity Taylor said that she keeps small amounts of money in her checking account and most and puts most into her savings to not overspend. That's actually a really, really good idea. And that's something that I have been trying to do, because if I see I got a lot of money in my checking account, well, that is going to make me want to that makes me think, oh, well, hey, I can go go shopping. I can get me a couple new cute outfits. In reality, we can't do that. We got to, you know, we got to save and have that cushion for when we need it. So that's a great way to have that cushion um, and to have money in um, in another account for those needs that we might not expect. Great idea. All right. So our method of I do the envelope saving. Um, I'm I love cash. Cash is is everything to me. Um, so like what I'll do is I'll get a whole bunch of envelopes together and I'll put different um, different things on them and then I'll put money into those. So like my wants and my needs, my self-care bills, like I'll put that on the envelope and individually put cash into each one to split up that money as well as make sure I have uh, enough going to that bill. And it's mostly like I do a, a weekly type of thing. Um, to do the envelopes, you just put money in there and then you go about that day and then you don't touch it like at all. Like you make sure once you put that money in there and you put that envelope away, that's it. Like it, that doesn't go nowhere else. And if you do, you're just gonna be short on an item and you're not gonna be able to put nothing nowhere because that's where you out through the week. Um, what's your saving method? So my saving method is um, $5 challenge. Uh, whenever you go out eating with your friends, family, or even if you get change back from the gas station, getting gas, uh, when you see any $5 bill as change, you will literally like uh, put it in a jar. But that's what I do. Uh, meantime, I receive $5 back. Even if my uncle give me $10, I'll probably just save half of that and put it in a jar. Um, 
And that's most definitely a good challenge. Um, also, it's a 50, 30, 20 rule. So 50% or needs, um, your needs is more, um, your needs of your paycheck. Uh, things that such as like your rent, your utilities, your car payment, mortgage, food, those are your needs um, as far as those. And then next you have 20% of your savings. So as far as your paycheck, when you get your paycheck, you should you should save and invest into as such as like so much of your savings, like invest into it, like put it up as far as your emergency funds, retirement savings, yeah, stocks, 401ks, um, just really just like, and then like have some cash in like between like three to six months in your of your emergency funds. Just save so you can have to cover up for between three, I mean, I mean three to six months. So um, must definitely save for a rainy day. If nobody ever told you that, my grandmother told me that, and family members always save for a rainy day because you never know when something can happen to your car, your phone bill, or phone broke. Um, if you even need to help a family member out that you're close to, just save for a rainy day. Also, 30% on your wants as far as your paycheck. Uh, want to go towards, you know, you want to go traveling, hang out with your friends. You want to go uh, dine out, uh, dine in with your friends, uh, your boyfriend, girlfriends. Uh, you want to go shopping and just having fun traveling. Um, like when you said that she want to save for traveling. Uh, yes, most definitely. That could be, that's your 30% of your paycheck of your wants. So, yeah, that's it with that one. Uh, this all relates to uh, don't put everything in one basket. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. So make sure that your money is not just sitting in one place. Um, take it. You got to the, the the risk and reward is is amazing. Take it, invest it and double it, uh, whether that's stocks, uh, putting it into an account or you just got other different ways to double your money. Uh, do that. But don't don't keep your money at one spot. Uh, move it around and uh, make your money work for you. Um, and that's just how we're doing it. It is. Uh, so the breakout room. So we're actually it's good. Uh, so we're going to go into a breakout room. No. Okay. So that doesn't work. Um, so what we're going to do is, so we're going to skip the back out room. So we've got three examples and we're going to have a few people let us know, um, how would they do it and, um, how do they, uh, do their spending? So, so group one, right. Got $300. So they got, they got a car and they got auto insurance, which is a hundred dollars and health insurance, which is also, uh, around that 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 amount so you got three hundred dollars right so this is not nothing realistic hopefully uh because <laughs> money gonna go quick um but let us know like how do you break that down into like priorities and then how do you keep yourself from going over or uh spending too much as well as how would you put that into a, like a, a smart goal as well yeah, so how would you how would you plan this out? You only have three hundred dollars in your bank account. You just got paid. You got three hundred dollars in your bank account. Uh your your auto insurance is coming up and your health insurance coming up. So you only have three hundred dollars and you have to put gas in your car to be able to get to work during that week. You work seven days a week or even five days a week. And how would you how would you prioritize yourself during that week? Um, you said three hundred. Uh, it says five hundred. Oh. Oh yeah. So so what we did was like we broke it down. Like one group got uh five hundred, one group got three hundred. Like we broke it down like that. So this group got three hundred, right? And you have to break it down like that uh, for as um, as what we gave you, because we tried to make it uh, different. I think um, group one, they should put money money in their savings. 
and then for gas, put at least twenty dollars up, and then whatever they gotta pay for their health and um, auto. Okay. All right, okay. so that's perfect. Okay. Uh, anybody else uh, want to let us know how they would deal with Group One? Mm -hmm. All right, so this is this is the groups. Yeah, these are the groups that we have. So we're doing group, uh, well, one. you can just pick which one you feel like you'll be able to work with and then just let us know. Um, for us group one, like something I would do, uh, fill up that tank for the week and keep that mug. Uh, you got to learn how to be able to stretch that gas. Uh, fill it up and only do what you need to do. If you ain't got to drive your car, don't drive it. Tell uh, your friends that you can't go out that week because you on a budget of $300 and <laughs> you got bills to pay that week. This is coming up. I was like, sometimes <laughs> you got to say no to some fun to build up some funds. Uh, so make sure like, no. Stay on it. Go ahead. Um, something else you gotta you gotta remember is that you gotta feed yourself. So um, those are all things that you know you do automatically on a day to day basis that you might not think about, including in your budget. But um, feeding yourself, you know, getting food, whether that's going to the grocery store or um, going out to fast food or going out to a nice restaurant, you gotta. You got a budget for that stuff as well. So three hundred dollars—that's not just for your car and auto insurance. That would also be for food, um, anything, anything that you need to take care of yourself that week. Um, and I see somebody else said something in the um, chat. She would put. $20 towards groceries. Good. Okay. $20 for groceries, 30 for gas and the rest for bills. I think that that is very realistic. Um, if it's, if you're only, or if you're only, um, if this is only for you, if this is a budget for just you, I think $20 for groceries is doable for a few days, I guess. I'm not sure how long we could stretch that, but I'm sure that, um, since I have a family, I don't know how I can stretch that $20 with three of us, but for just one person, maybe that's possible. Um, $30 for gas, it's about, for at least for me to fill up my tank, it's about $35. Um, and my tank lasts about a week. So depending on how big your gas tank is, $30 for gas is pretty reasonable. And then the rest for bills. I think that's a great, um, a great plan. And then um, Chastity, you also said, fill up your gas tank and only go to the place you need to go and go to the grocery store because you'll spend less by cooking. Yes. In, instead of going to get fast food. Another great point. Um, you are going to be spending less money going to the grocery store because, um, you know, it, it, it's a lot cheaper. You're not paying for the cost of somebody cooking your food. Great point. Those are definitely ways that you can be, um, thrifty and, um, thrifty and save, save money and stretch it longer for sure. Uh, so anybody else uh, want to speak on not even not just group one, uh, any other five groups? I was but like, this is teaching us to uh, when money is funny. You gotta you gotta you gotta know how to move around it and and go with the flow. Eat up. So anybody um, gonna pick any other groups that we have? Let's go. I'll do the second group. Okay. Say it again. The second group. Okay. All right. So how would you how would you work with that? Um. Well, bus you have to pay to get on and get off. So I would put like at least a hundred up for that. Not okay. even a hundred. Probably like seventy. 
and then for health insurance, I will put however much the health insurance is, and then whatever money left I have, I'll put it in savings. Okay. Okay, that's perfect. Um, so with group two, like definitely what she said would work perfectly. Um, and she still has money to to move around with, um, which is good. Uh, the last thing you, one thing you want to do before you get into any situation is be able to know how to uh, move around the the hiccups and the uh, and the speed and the speed bumps. So to be able to know how to work with um, a low amount of money or a high amount of money is good. Because uh, the last thing you want to do is accidentally and put yourself in a uh, deficit to where now you have to build, rebuild yourself. So that that's definitely good. I would work with group three. All okay. right. So how would you do that one? Um, since I have my car, I would just uh, fill in the gas and basically do DoorDash because DoorDash makes fast, easy money. Okay. And I would just pay the auto insurance. Basically, I would pay my other insurance and the health insurance and just not go out with friends. Mm -hmm. And hopefully with the DoorDash, I would be making um, more money comes in anyway. So I would just save that. Okay. Okay, that's perfect. She, okay, thank you. she let us know how to say the 350 as well as stack on top of it, which is perfect. Uh, sometimes you got to invest into different other uh, jobs to be able to stack on top of that. Yeah, so that was that was perfect for sure. Uh, DoorDash, definitely have to look into that. Yeah, we'll <laughs> definitely invest into more income with DoorDash. <laughs> that's definitely. And then a couple of the people said in the chat that um, for group four and five, yeah. Ubering can cost a lot. Did somebody already mention this? Yeah. Um, Ubering is expensive. You're right. You have to pay for the, the cost of somebody taking you somewhere. Um, uh, and then um, instead of Ubering, you would catch the bus for sure. Um, and then KV on Robinson, she said group two, you would get a monthly bus pass to pay and pay your insurance. So that way you'll save money this that time and next time. Yes, if you, for those of you that ride the bus, a bus pass is gonna be one way to save you money because um, you got that unlimited access to the bus for that month. Um, so with that being said, yes, bus pass is gonna be a great way to save money instead of um, taking the bus anytime you need to take the bus. Um, and then your, again, your budget is gonna definitely depend on if you have a car or if you take the bus, because you don't, if you take the bus, you don't have those expenses of maintaining that, of maintaining that because you don't have a car. So um, cars are gonna cost more, but you know, you gotta, you gotta maintain them. You gotta keep them up. And speaking of, there's a workshop on car buying next week. So um, stay, stay posted if you wanna hear about that. It's, it's a great workshop hopefully to make you guys feel comfortable in purchasing a car if that's something that you want to do. Um, any other any other ways that you guys would kind of stretch your money based on the amount that you have to spend for that week? Um. So again, um, before we move on, know that you never be ashamed of the position that you're in. Uh, you're where you're at for a reason and it's only to better and strengthen yourself. So just learn for ideas on how uh, solutions. Uh, again, research. Uh, there's always ways out there to, uh, to bring in more money and to uh, work with the situation you're in. So I would definitely research, research, research again uh, and figure out a solution for the uh, situation you're in. And then this is a budgeting uh, template. Again, we all have different budgeting ways and different uh, worksheets and, and setups or whatever and different bills to pay. So again, my budget is not gonna look the same as your budget.
and your budget not gonna look the same as somebody else's. So be know that it's it's all personal, especially when it comes to your money. You sometimes you just gotta get real personal with your money, and that's just how it is. Um, it's your money, and it's for you, and it's benefiting everything that's about you and in your life. So again, take out that time. No matter how much time you need, as long as it's in your schedule, take out that time and, and deal with it. Um, the last thing you want to do is think it's a no big deal, and you look up and you're running low on some on some change, uh, and and you have nowhere to do. The last thing anybody wants to do is have to ask anybody for some money. But if that's the situation that you're in then you're just going to have to reevaluate and do what you got to do. So ask yourself these questions with building a budget. Oh, uh, what is your income? What is your income? What are your goals? What are your expensive? And what are your priorities? Well, my income, I get paid bi-weekly. You might get paid weekly or either bi-weekly. My goals, my goals right now is to save so I can go back to school. Uh, I did receive my uh, bachelor's in business ma management, but I am pursuing to go to get my master's later on in life. Um, my expenses, expenses, I'm sorry. Um, really, um, my bills right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so I have my phone bill, I have my car insurance, uh, I have bills at home, which I have my grandmother too, her bills. Um, but my main priorities are getting all my bills out the way. I do um, set aside my fun money, too, um, as far as <laughs> I do go out of town a lot and <laughs> hang out with my friends a lot. And, um, yeah, so my priorities is, like, balancing off. Um, my priorities need to be a little much better than <laughs> traveling a lot. But, I mean, that's what I want to do. So uh, what are some of y'all income? Do y'all get paid um, by weekly or weekly? Mm -hmm. um, I get paid bi-weekly and that really helps with budgeting because then mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I can't, I definitely can't spend this much because I don't get paid to like another whole week after okay. that. So what's so your goal? With saving. You know? um, so every time, every bi-weekly I get paid, every other week that I get paid, I set aside a certain amount of money and put it in my mm -hmm. savings. And then just keep the other one in the check-in just in case anything comes up in the week that I need. Okay. Okay, that's perfect. I like um, that. So you definitely sound like you definitely got your, your things in order, and that's perfect. Um, again, you have to know what your priorities are, and you yep. have to know that early on um, because the last thing you want, again, is the uh, the important priorities to sneak up on you, and now you have to reevaluate. So, again... Knowing those priorities, knowing that you gotta put some money aside is perfect. You good. And something I wanna share since um, I'm a mom, my priorities right now are yes, saving for me and for things that I need to save for, but also saving for the future of my daughter. So um, saving for college for her, I have a savings account already opened up and she's only a year and a half. So if you have if you, any moms out there, or any dads out there, if you guys have kids, get them set up now for the future. Have a savings account set up for them so that you're building their savings and and their the amount that they're put, that you're putting in the savings for them is building and is gaining interest. Um, you know that's 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 another that's one of my priorities. So I just want to put that out there so that for any any of you guys in this in a similar similar situation. Um, that's that's something that you also gotta gotta plan for and gotta have goals for. Which is perfect. Um, I love that she touched on that um, uh, about the parenting. Uh, I'm not a parent, so I don't know how to touch on that. But I'm definitely glad that she did because um, things happen. Uh, you want to be able to take care of the, your child first before anything else. Um, which is good. So I'm glad she touched on that. Um, shout out to all the parents in the Zoom. Uh, you keep doing you. Um, <laughs> and stay strong in the budgeting game. Um, so here's a few videos. Just a second. To sum up what we are talking about. 
don't know. Can you guys, can you see this? That I pulled up for you. It's not the first one. Sure, it's not. So can you, can you see this? So can you guys see it? Yep. Okay. All right, so let me know if you can hear it or not. Yeah, we can hear it, but it's really low. And that's why I made what We got a second ago. Sure it's gonna work. It has to. How much we got? Fifty two cents. That'll work. <laughs> Make sure this is going to work. It has to. I'm 
who have to tell you, do not say we're dreaming when I'm accepting. Oh, my. I didn't develop a dream. How much money do we have? 42,000. Love you, man. <laughs> oh, hey guys, I'm Bill. I'm True. And thank you so much for watching your video. And good night, Jim. Good night. We're back on the presentation. You see it. That's cool. Um, so with those videos, um, I'll, uh, anybody want to talk about those videos before we go into it? Yeah. Can you see my screen? Um, I think that last question, uh, one of you not, well, was something about asking your parents some money. Um, I'm going to be honest. I'm not going to not ask nobody for no money. Um, you want to contribute to the, to the poor people funds. Go right ahead. Um, I am always open-handed. Um, but one thing about that, um, not, not all money is not good money. Uh, that's something that we definitely want to keep in, keep in mind. Um, that was a joke. Um, I'm definitely not having my hand open for any and all money. <laughs> um, but I would definitely, yeah, I would definitely look out for the, for the money that's coming in. Uh, make sure that it is benefiting and there's no strings attached. Um, Cause the last thing you want to do is look up and you have money in your account and then now you don't, or you signed up for a rewards card and they swiped your whole account clear. Like look out for those signs um, that that gut instinct is everything. Make sure that you uh, again, uh, double check, make sure uh, all signs are pointing to benefiting and good, good deeds. Um, again, you don't want to look up or wake up the next morning with a fraud or um, your account cleared or your identity being stolen. And like, again, not all money is good money. All money looks the same, but it's not good. <clears throat> so the budgeting resources. Google Sheets definitely has free budgeting templates um, that you can create. Um, I don't know if any of you know how to work Google Sheets or Google Docs or Google Slides, or whatever, but they definitely have good budgeting templates to where you can break down those uh, specific um, bills and put your money into those things. Uh, the free apps, you want to talk about those? Also, oh, different free apps um, um, that um, we have, um, you can go to Mint. Um, if you have an iPhone or Android, you can do Mint. Uh, it's personal finance and money. Uh, they also have bill organizers uh, and reminders, um, nerd uh, wallet finance uh, tracker, and uh, every dollar and bu budgeting your money. Um, you can choose any one of these apps um, to use as a budgeting. Also, you can use your phone too. I mean. <laughs> You know, iPhone have different budgeting things and apps on there too. Also, I was like, iPhone definitely comes with a reminder. Yeah, no um, reminder. It, it comes with it. It's free. Um, use what uh, the resources that are right in front of you. If you don't have to go and search for nothing. Don't take out that time to do that. If there's research or if there is things right in front of you or people that are giving you ideas and free gems. Take it and run with it. Um, do what you can with what what you have. Um, 
time is money and money is time. So if you ain't got to waste no time, don't. Um, yeah. Um, something else. I want to add something with this slide. So, um, yeah, there's lots of resources available for you that are free. So definitely take advantage. Um, and there was something else that I was going to say, but I forgot. And it was, uh, it'll come to me. Um, oh my goodness. It's on the tip of my tongue. Well, it, I will remember it eventually, but, um, before, before we move on, we are going to use this transition right here um, for Alexis and Jeremiah to come on my computer because the one that they're using is about to die and <laughs> someone forgot their charger. So we are going to um, we're going to have them use my computer and um, I'm going to share my screen with their presentation. So if you guys want to stop sharing your screen. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, yeah. Can you guys see my screen with the presentation? Okay, so they are gonna come on here now and continue talking about the, re oh yeah, I remember what I was gonna say. Um, so what I am saying, what I was gonna say is that, um, oh my gosh, I just forgot it again. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, continue talking and I will remember it for the third time. Okay. This is a, a perfect example of writing your stuff down um, so that you um, don't forget. Um, again, this is why we don't do budgeting in the house or in a relaxing environment because it's that easily to forget something or lose track of something. And I remember, again, I'm not going to forget it this time. So I'm going to, we send an email out after this presentation with the um, recording of the presentation and um, the survey in the email, but there will also be these, um, the information of these resources in that email as well. So you'll find um, those resources in the email that I send out to you guys, or that we SL Youth Jobs sends out to you guys um, tomorrow or Friday. So just keep that in mind that you will have access to these resources. So, all right. I do want to check the chat. Oh, on the chat. Um, all right. So, smart goals resources. Um. So, here are just three little simple um free apps um to set up some smart goals. Um. We got Bricks, uh, twenty four Asana, and then we got Stride, Strides. Uh, goals and uh habit uh tracker um you could go and get these on iphone i don't know if they're on android but i know they're probably they're they're most definitely on iphones um for people who have androids they probably got different apps um but they probably also have five on there so yeah these are some um apps that you guys can go and make your smoke smart smart goals <laughs> i'm sorry smart goals um for for um, your budgeting um, so I would definitely, again, <laughs> research, research, research. Um, this is something that we did personally um, because we have iPhones um, for any Android users or if you have anything else that you're using for as technology, then do your research. Um, you can also use your phone too. So don't forget, you can use your phone besides the app. I was like, if, if you if you do the time to just check your phone, your phone is automatically going to have certain things for you to make things easier for yourself. Uh, again, reminder is a big one. I be forgetting everything, um, but to but it literally sits there and reminds me what's going on and what's happening in here. All right, 
So what's your budgeting motivation? Um, brings us back to what we started. Um, so now that we have went through it, what are you guys' motivations? Like what is keeping you to uh, stay budgeting and staying on the SMART goals? So like what's our weekly goals, monthly goals, yearly goals? What's yeah, motivating you? I will say, like I said, uh, my name, Amanda, you can't see me since the presentation is on, but my motivation is my daughter right now and her future. So, and as well as my, our future, me and my husband's future. That's my motivation. Again, shout out to those parents out there. Um, again, I'm not a parent myself, but, you know, I am, I understand the process of what it goes through. Um, somebody said in the chat, my bills, definitely. Um, last thing you're going to do is get caught slacking, as we say, and they come up on you and they, uh, and you fall by the wayside by them with the money. Mm -hmm. She also said, uh, saving up to go back to school for design. Yes. Perfect. Well, definitely let save that... up to go back to school. <laughs> be worth it at the end of your life. Um, <laughs> definitely let that be your motivation. Um, and don't forget it. Um, at any times you fall short or get discouraged, uh, remember why you started in the first place. Mm -hmm. uh, remember why you are where you are to begin with and then keep going. I'm sorry. Um, um saving Trinity. up for my career goals. That's perfect. Um, I say if you want to expound on those career goals, what you have planned, where you're at in your schooling, Trinity. Just I want to start a big. Okay, you want to start a business. That's perfect. So entrepreneurship. Yeah. Uh, we're actually having a workshop on entrepreneurship. Yeah. Soon, yeah. sometime. You'll get that email, though, for so sure. So our last workshop that we are having, it's on mm -hmm. August 4th, I think I'm, if I'm remembering correctly. The whole topic is resiliency throughout young adulthood, and entrepreneurship is one of those topics. So if you want to learn more, come to our last workshop in August. I was like, definitely, we also have some uh, entrepreneurs in the Young Money Managers um, that will definitely be able to speak and expound on that one. So if I was you, I would definitely get on that um, and see what's up with that and uh, keep yourself, again, research is a big thing. I would give you for a tip, um, say for my business, I would like to own in the next two to three years. Oh, that's what's up. Uh, what kind of business, uh, Chastity, are you trying to own or are you trying to start up? Uh, yeah, I just asked you a question. Hair salon and barbershop and also my own clothing line. That's actually perfect um, that you put that in there. Um, I don't know if one of the Young Money Managers wants to speak on this, but one of them actually have a, a, a bonnet thing in it they're trying to set up. I don't know if she wants to speak on that or not, but uh, that's perfect, though, that you're actually trying to set up your own hair salon, <laughs> hair salon and your barbershop. I, I definitely need to cut myself. So... <laughs> When you set that up, definitely let me know. Uh, we'll keep it chat because your boy doing a cut right now. Um, but uh, Trinity, I don't know if you want to speak on what business you want to start up, um, but let us know. So yeah, um, so the person who said they wanted to start their own uh, beauty salon and barbershop, I'm with you. I'm the one who wants to do the bonding. So I collab, get a couple people to get them do rest to keep their fresh cut and their waves done. And for the ladies, keep their hair wrap. You know, setting savage. This is how we network. There we go. 
Um, so clothing business, I love it. Um, I definitely, that's definitely relevant. That'll never go out of style as long as you keep the trend going and realize what's what. So I definitely love it, clothing, clothing business. Um, what kind of clothes are you trying to get into? Or is it like a, a broad thing right now? Oh, <laughs> uh, you said it's broad. Okay, okay, okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. Um, I definitely love the the entrepreneurship in the chat um, and um, mm -hmm. on the on the talking. I definitely love it. We definitely gotta keep that up. Um, it's a big thing, entrepreneurship and uh and black communities. Uh, so I love it. Keep it going. I'm not gonna say and say it's gonna be easy, but uh, if you keep at it, consistency is key. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you keep at it, um, the world is yours, um, and everything that you claim is, is bound to be at your feet. Um, so anybody else want to speak on motivation or any other entrepreneur things that they have going on? I definitely love these ideas though. Cause your boy definitely needs some new clothes and a haircut. So... <laughs> Definitely be looking out for those. My family is a huge part of my motivation. I love that. Um, again, I definitely feel that um, on a, a on a different level, uh, for sure. Um, a big motivation for me as well is is my family. Uh, immediate, um, for sure, more more so to speak. Um, Got to be that uh, first generation of uh, successful business owners. So that's that's what I'm looking for and pushing for. Um, anybody else? Anybody in here um, going off to college anytime soon or this upcoming fall? Christian says yes. What, what school oh, are you what going school to? to Christian? Okay. Y'all heard me. I said something earlier. Y'all couldn't hear me. <laughs> no, I, I couldn't hear you earlier. We can hear you now, though. Okay. Uh, I went to Lincoln University. I'm uh, probably going to be Mm -hmm. You say you're going back? Uh, probably so. I I hope to. What's your uh? Degree what you majoring? Yeah. What you majoring in? Um, I haven't decided. Oh, you didn't decide yet? Is this your first like freshman year, sophomore year, or like? Uh, I I went before, but um, yeah, that may be what I do: fashion design. Okay. Okay. That's what's up. Uh, again, um, uh, you want to give motivation to those going into college? Um, it's 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 uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, uh, why have I my three now? Went so I as, huh? I'm sorry, what you uh, said? I said I went before, I just didn't finish. Okay, it's okay. That's, that's um, I had multiple friends literally left my sophomore year of college and literally never came back. Um, like sometimes everybody say college is not for everybody, which I understand that. In certain situations, some of my friends left because of family members, some left because of financial situations. Um, but uh, must definitely uh, get back into, yeah, must definitely get back into schooling. Um, it'll pay off at the end. Yes, it's going to be a struggle, trust me. I had plenty of times, nights, days where I struggled uh, with some of my classes. Classes is not easy, uh, most definitely not. Um, most definitely go talk to, even if you have financial situations, most definitely go talk to your financial aid or mm -hmm. like the financial aid at your school because sometimes they most definitely can help you even, just don't be, sometimes you be rude to them, but uh, most definitely go there and actually talk to them because they most definitely can help you. I have sometimes like situations where I can pay stuff off and that actually look up some loans or tell you to apply for certain scholarships to help you out. Mm -hmm. Uh, Chastity said, yes, I'm planning on going to school for uh, interior and fashion design. Oh, that's perfect. Uh, do you know what college you're going to? 
are you a graduating senior or like let us know what's up yeah um i know i think um stevens um it's an all girls school up there in como that's a good school um i know ucm also has a good fashion design uh, program if you are trying to go off to school i'm throwing out some um, schools for you um i had two of uh, my friends closest friends um also a uh, graduate with a degree in fashion. Um, for uh, 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 Olivia, you got a Mizzou, you went into your um, junior, year. junior year. Uh, what's your degree in? And uh, Anna Marie says I'm a junior at the University of Kansas, uh, marketing major. major. Okay, uh, so, so. Mr. Nkosi. Yeah, <laughs> look, Mr. Nkosi is a marketing major. major. <laughs> oh, she's an English major, yeah. Yeah, see, I was a business management major. Um, so, yeah. But also, uh, finish off strong with the schooling. If anybody in a um, Zoom call that is pursuing to go to school in the fall um, of incoming freshmen, um, must All definitely the um, look into uh, UCM. Um, they got Mizzou in here, they got Lincoln, and then they got University of Kansas. Um, I was able to look into them um, four schools that um, everybody announced mm -hmm. on here. Um, I know UCM has a, some good majors. Um, I'm business manager, if you want to talk about it, more about um, business or anything within that field. Also, um, hit me up um, after the chat or on the chat um, with schooling. So, yeah. I have a, we'll put your email on there. Yeah, I'll, we'll put her email in there, and then if anyone wants to email her about college and her experience, you can do that. <laughs> um, so, speaking of college, um, is anybody here in high school that is beginning the process of looking into colleges? Um, mm. If you are, if there are any of you in high school looking into colleges, if you're Definitely start the process sooner rather than later. Um, get into get a get a list of schools you want to attend, and yeah. then make sure you're visiting those schools your junior year so that you can apply and be admitted your senior year. Um, stay on top of the game. You guys got this. And we're putting in. She's putting in her email right now so that you guys can have it if you want to reach out to her. <laughs> then he is get out. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Oh, yeah. well, my school email all the time. Oops. Yeah, I must definitely will contact me. So um, I just sent my email in there. If you guys want to contact me on my email, you must definitely can. I must definitely, um, always on my email because I get emails daily because I work in from jobs. So yes. It's censored putting this out here. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's Jer <laughs> Jeremiah's YouTube channel. Follow him, subscribe. Uh, for sure. Uh, I definitely got a lot of going uh, for as um, entrepreneurship and uh, working out or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. Everybody trying to get their summer body together. Although the summer is going to be over, we still got to keep them bodies together for the winter. So let me know. Uh, subscribe. Uh, if you guys work out, so we can collab. Uh, Y'all can kill me on a workout and then we we'll get. <laughs> Chill out. <laughs> and then we'll, we'll, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll see what's up. Um, but uh, I definitely love all the uh, the conversing mm -hmm. that's been going on. I definitely love everybody continuing with school, um, whether that's um, high school students, college students. I love it. Um, definitely uh, continue up with uh, what you got going on. Remember, uh, consistency is key. Um, anything that you put your mind to is yours um, on a platter. So um, keep at it.
Um, if you, whatever you want in life, whether you change up last minute, um, it's all good. Um, again, reevaluate. Um, don't just jump head first, test the waters and then go into it and then uh, see how that goes. Hopefully we keep in touch uh, so I can see a few of those entrepreneurs um, out there. The fashion um, majors, the English majors. Yeah, um, all that. So I'm definitely wanting and hoping to see good things and uh, great things out of the uh, the youth that is in this Zoom call and in future Zoom calls uh, to come. Uh, I'm glad to be able to teach you guys on this budgeting and smart goals. And I'm glad that you guys have taught me a few things. Yeah, most definitely. Um, that I'm definitely going to use myself and I'll let you guys know how that goes down. Um, so now we'll open it up for questions um, or anything and we'll go from there. Feel free to ask type. any questions. Yeah, ask questions or put them in the chat box whenever you feel comfortable. Or if you just want to sit here and look at each other, we can just look at each other <laughs> until the time's over. With. Um, I have a my bad. Um, can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so my question would be. What age is this appropriate to learn about budgeting, saving? When can I start doing this? Do I got to uh, be grown? So that's actually a perfect question. And that video kind of answered it. Um, it doesn't matter. Whenever you're able to, um, that first dollar, whether you are uh, just starting off in middle school or elementary, whenever you get that first dollar, it's perfect to learn about it. Um, mm -hmm. As in that video, them kids were, younger than than all of us so it, it doesn't matter whenever whenever you're able to grasp that knowledge mm -hmm. grasp it and run with it um whenever you are able to get it it's, it's it's for you you know what i'm saying so run with that knowledge that you're given whenever you're given it that was a perfect question anybody else Yeah, we can just sit here and look at each other too. <laughs> Go ahead, stop sharing. What's up? We can just look at each other all day. Lexi, you want to look at them? <laughs> you got any questions for them? We have something in the chat. Yeah. What? some advice you guys would give us about trying to have the right headspace about school and ways to keep in mind exactly what are you doing it for? That's a excellent question. If I could answer this. If I could answer this. Go ahead. Perfect. Um, this is a really, really dope question. And That's what I've if said. you're asking this question, <laughs> If you're asking this question, you're definitely um, you're definitely in the right headspace for it. Um, you want to always keep in mind um, that when it comes to school, not only not to knock anybody that doesn't want to go to school or anything like that, but people who make that who are who have at least a bachelor's degree make twenty three thousand dollars more on average or something like that. Um, there's a, or I might be wrong. I'm just pulling that out of the top of my head, but that's one of the reasons, but you also want to go and look at it from the perspective of, is this a fulfilling thing for me? And if it is fulfilling to you, if it's something that you are passionate about, then go for it. But you also have to recognize that it's probably going to be a little bit hard, but you also want to recognize on top of that that anything that is worthwhile is going to be difficult. And that's what's important, just recognizing that. Oh, definitely. Um, and also to add on to what Nkozi said, I know during this time he's in college, he's a sophomore um, at SLU. Um, so for the people that's a little bit younger, I could vouch for it's scholarship season. 
it's time to make those letters, get those recommendation letters. And I know during your senior year, that can be really stressful. Um, even if you're a little bit younger than your senior year, your junior year, your sophomore year, start now. Start as young as you possibly can. But just know if it's going to be challenging for a little while. But you're going to feel so relieved when you get those acceptance letters. And, you know, and you setting yourself up for a big future. So don't feel like you never have enough time to, you know, find those scholarships, do those scholarships or look into colleges that you want to go to because you're setting yourself up. You're planning, you're budgeting now, you're saving now. You're going to save yourself so much money. If you go get all that scholarship, you will be, I promise you'll be debt free if you go find all the scholarships you can and even get some money back in your pocket and that will pay off in the long term when budgeting you're gonna have more money to budget you're gonna have more money to save than going to give it back to the um to the college debt collectors so do it now and just keep your head in the game i promise it's the ending Love, love those words of encouragement. You guys have a lot of wisdom to share. Definitely, um, those are all great things to keep in mind when you're maybe having some trouble with um, your education. Yeah. Stay focused and stay, stay um, and, motivated and keep your head up. Stay positive. Um, <laughs> and if you have friends to talk to, like talk to them about um, class, even though y'all got different majors, like all the time, I used to go to my friend's room and um, literally uh, sit there and just talk to them about my grades. Yeah, sometimes you, you're going to have a struggle in school as a whole. You're going to have a struggle. Trust me, I had plenty of days where I used to get mad. Some professors wouldn't, like some professors wouldn't even work with you. And then you would have, you would be sitting there like, oh my God, this professor not working with me. And then it's almost the end of the semester. I must definitely have some professors that will work with me, mm-hmm. literally help me get my grade up. You're just going to be going through a lot and just just keep in mind that you're there for a reason mm-hmm. and it's for either you or you're to better yourself. Nobody else but yourself. So in my head, when I was in school, I used to say all the time, like, I'm not here for nobody else but myself mm-hmm. to better my life, um, what I want out of life and to get a better education or, you know, a, 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 be- a greater education um, for the people that's not in school. Um, all I can say is I know school's not for everyone, which um, it's not. Um, I have plenty of friends that chose a different path from what I chose. So as far as that, um, I'll just say, yeah, just keep in mind why you want to school, who you want to school for. Um, some people go to school for their family members. Um, some people go to school just for themselves to better themselves and their life and what environment they came from to also just to get away from certain environments. If you get, you guys get what I'm saying. So yes. Yeah. Have fun if you do go to school. Huh? I said make sure you have fun if you do go to school. Yeah. Also, that's nothing. Also, whatever school you go to, make what make yeah make the most out of it. Like I went to a PWI, which I wanted to go to HBCU, but um. I just settled for my little PWI, UCM. I had a wonderful time out of my whole four years. I met the most wonderful people out of my life that I still talk to today. Half of the people that I still hang around with, they um, graduated, they in their fields, they in their career, most of them teachers, most of them are health majors. Um, Everybody in their fields right now in their career goals, I mean, I still talk to them to this day. Most of them graduated in 2019. I graduated in just 2020. So it's like, you can see the difference of 2017. I still keep in contact with them because it's just more than networking with that too also. So make the best out of your college years. Do not just sit in your dorm. Please do not just sit in your dorms. If it's activities out there from um, SGA, um, if you got SGA, um, you have... um, we have ABC, um, we have Sister Eugene on my campus, we got um, underdogs, like we have different organizations on our campus. If it's anybody organization, go out if they have um, 
um, any activities out, just go just to see what it is. You might meet, meet new people that you never met. And then half the time, I used to be at school and it was most definitely different people on campus like I never met before. Like, I'm like, okay, like they cool. And most of them stayed on a different other side of campus. So that's another thing why people don't really see each other either because they stay on the other side. But once they come out, you be like, okay, they cool people. Yeah, you gotta have fun it's in college. It's getting stressful. You gotta have fun. That's all I can say. Yeah, because if you just in school and not having fun, you're in your dorm just doing your homework, you might have a little miserable life and you be sad in your in your dorm or your apartment because you're not going out to have a little bit of fun. You don't have to have a lot, right. even though I know you want to stay focused on your studies, but also have fun. It's nothing wrong with having fun just a little bit and still standing your books. You know, I had my fun, <laughs> but I was in my books. <laughs> balance. It's all about balance, definitely. Yeah, time management, that's the word right there. You most and definitely got to balance in time management, I'm telling you. And then that's the main goal, time yeah. management. I was in 50 different organizations. <laughs> so speaking of balancing, um, you know, balancing your money. Sorry, I'm going to take this off because it's hard to hear. Um, making sure that you guys are balancing your money, making sure that your income, that your expenses do not exceed your income, making sure that that budget is um, balancing out and equaling what it should and that you have some money to save. So um, let us, I'm gonna share the survey in the chat right now. So give me just a second, okay. I just, I just posted the link to the survey. So if all of you guys, if you could take a couple minutes to do that survey, that would be amazing. Um, if you don't have time to do it now, that's fine. It will be in the email that we send um, tomorrow or Friday. So be on the lookout for that. You have to, you do have to complete the survey in order to be, uh, to be in the drawing for the gift cards that we have. So also remember that. And then um, I want to share the information on our next PD that we have. So I'm sharing my screen really fast. Can you guys see what I'm, what is shared right now? Okay, so this is our next PD that we are having. It's next Wednesday, same time, 5 to 7 p.m. Um, so this is, this is the flyer that they, that they made for the, the workshop that is next week. So make sure to, that you register for this like you registered for the one that you are in now. Um, if you have any questions about the registration link, then you can email me. I'll put my email in the chat box as well so you have that. Um, so thank you guys. We want to thank you for your participation, your engagement, your attendance. All of it was made, has made this workshop what we hoped it would be. So thank you so much. And um, before we end this, let me most definitely hear everybody let me put my, up on um, our emails. And subscribe, Mr. Woods. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be no hater. Okay, so I also shared my email for you guys if you have any questions about any of the workshops that are happening. Um, so yeah, reach out to us, use your resources wisely, network. Rem remember all of those things are very important to getting where you want to be. Always save for a rainy day. Yes. Always save for a rainy day. You never know what'll happen. Your mm -hmm. car might break down and you don't have the money to pay for it. And your family member <laughs> might tell you they ain't giving you no money. And then what you gonna do, just sit there with a broken car? That hurts. <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> Any other questions before we end our <laughs> workshop for today? Ma'am. What'd you say? I said no, ma'am. Okay. Wonderful. Well, do you guys want to say anything as we before we close? Um, you last Great job. Uh, Thank for, you, Jania. For um the people that's um going into y'all fall semester, have a good semester. Um, pray. Um, and make sure you pass all your classes. Study and have fun a little bit, but must definitely have a good fall semester. And for the people that's not in school. Um, just have a good year as a whole. Now they're going to share, each one of them are going to share something that they want you guys to take away from this whole presentation. Uh, take away.
My main thing. Save it for a rainy day. <laughs> I will keep on emphasizing that because uh, you never know what will happen. Um, just always and use some of the tools and the things that we said in our um, presentation about the five dollar challenge and all of that. Just just use everything to your advantage, mm -hmm. even for schooling to get back into school. Mm -hmm. Use it all. Um, I use it most definitely. Uh, I just learned just save for a rainy day. <laughs> What's that for me? What you got? Uh, my takeaway would be uh, research. Um, again, I told you I was definitely going to say that throughout it. Uh, research, research, research. Um, anything that you don't know um, is literally right there in front of you. Uh, everybody has Google or some sort of uh, researching idea or tool. Use that to the best of your ability. Um, that, that's really it. Um, anything you don't know, anything you want to know more on, research. Um, you can't, can't go wrong with knowledge. Um, knowledge is key and knowledge is power. So um, if anybody, if I could tell you anything is put yourself on game. Don't, don't wait till nobody else do it. Put yourself on game um, and, and see where that takes you. Uh, sometimes you got to do it yourself. Waiting around for somebody else is not going to work. So. Amazing. Right. Right. Presentations. Right. Yeah, I'm all right. Thank you guys for your, again, for your participation and attendance. Thank you guys. We hope you guys have a great summer in STL Youth Jobs and reach out to us if you have any questions or you want, you need, you need resources for this topic. We are so happy to help you guys. <laughs> See you guys later. Bye. Oh, and I want to give a big congratulations because this is Young Money Manager's first um, Zoom meeting. And you guys did a really amazing job. So that's it for me. Thank you. Oh, wow. Thank